Paul, we are expected to join in the singing, the praying, is one worshiping community. The choir leads, and we join. The chief celebrant leads, and we respond. In a most solemn manner. Once more, welcome to the Cathedral of the Most Holy Trinity. The Cathedral of the Catholic Diocese of Olo. I welcome you in the name of our indefatigable Bishop, Most Reverend Dr. Augustine to Chuku Okwama, the entire Presbyterium of the Catholic Diocese of Olo, our very vibrant and supportive laity, our collaborating religious in the diocese, Nahamad Nina Kaina Sunno. Look in Adeganya, the Bishop Gabata, the Duranya Jamasa, the entire Nigerian church is gathered here today. What a special privilege! All the bishops of Nigeria. More than 50 bishops, cardinals, archbishops, bishops, auxiliary bishops, even the retired ones are here today. We are going home today with bags of blessings. The church in Nigeria is complete here. The Reverend sisters are in their numbers. The Reverend Brothers, the priests, I can see our worthy knights and ladies, their ladies. Now may we all stand up.
Of course, today we are celebrating the Mass of the 24th Sunday in the ordinary time of the year C. Obo Ajama Sinke Izuka Sunday Iriabo na no na for Nkato Diko Tunzukosi Agria Kaina Cho no Tutua. celebration is none other than our own most reverend Lucius Iwejuru Ugoji, the Archbishop and the Metropolitan of the Owere Archdiocese and Owere Province, and at the same time, the President of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria, and also a man of many caps, wearing many caps. I can cite our new star on the horizon, His Eminence, Peter Cardinal Ebere Opaleke. I think this is his first official appearance after being after receiving the cardinalate. Is the chief host, Most Reverend Augustine Tochuku Upoma, the Catholic Bishop of Alo.
and if I'm not mistaken, this is also the first official appearance of Most Reverend Lucius Uwejuru Gorge in this cathedral since after receiving the pallium. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Your eminences, your graces, your lordships, the governor of Imo State, and other government functionaries, my brother priests, the religious, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, gathered around the altar of the Lord, let us pray that his light will dispel the darkness in our lives. In these perilous and difficult times in our nation, when we are besieged with so many problems, let us present our country, our church, and our families to God for his blessings, protection, and guidance. Let us also ask God to make our second plenary session here in our law very fruitful, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist. Let us call to mind that we are sinners unworthy to stand before God, let us ask him pardon for all our mistakes. I confess to Almighty God May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
to God on high. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you 
with all our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. May we all now take our seats to listen to the readings. I am not God who can't be hard to A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, the Lord said to Moses, Go down for your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way, which I commanded them. They have made for themselves a molten calf, and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. But of you I will make a great nation. But Moses begged the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought forth? out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do to his people. The word of the Lord. I will arise and go to my father I will arise and go to my father Cleanse me from my sins. 
Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Spirit, a broken and humbled heart, O oh God, you will not spurn. From the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I thank him who has given me strength for this, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful by appointing me to his service. Though I formerly blasphemed and persecuted and insulted him, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I am the foremost of sinners. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience for an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. in Christ, reconciling the world to himself and entrusting to us a message of reconciliation.
mahon osusun di ono so na ndi omenjo bia kutre jeso inuru kuya ndi farisi na ndi oda okwukwo ta muru na ase nwoka na na bata ndi omenjo suru kwa na erinye jeso we jiro ka bilu gwa hoku se olonye ni mu no nwere otu na re aturu otu ni me ha efu o ha re ha po iri tolu ni tolu ndi ozo ka icho otu ahu furu rombe oga chota ya mambo chota ya ona atu kwa si ya nubu ya na ngore mbo olo tarolo ona apo kondye nyi ya nandi abato ubi ya se ha soro no mngore ya ni hina a chota la maturu mu furu efu no to aka ahu agwa munu okonu ga di na eligwe ni isi otu onye njo chaharere no karia ni isi mmadi ri tolu ni tolu ndi nchaharere na de hemba olotu nwanyi ga enwe ko bi ri otu efula ahu ya na ga hi amunyo ko mpa na ka za chasi ulo ya nko ma na choya we rumbe o chotare ya mbe o chotare ya oga pokota ndi enyi ya na ndi abato obi ya se ha sorono mngore anu ni hi na chotala mo otu kobu m furu efu no otu aka ahu ana ma gu unu ndi mo ma ke chine ke na anuri anu ni isi otu onye njo nke che harere no jesu kukwara se otu nwoke nwaru mu oka abuo nke nta na ime ha asere nna ha nna ke inye gi ni ile ugbu a nye mu nke m nna ha ke kwara mada abu ahu iye onwere ko obocho ole mo le gachara nke nta na ime ha pokota chara inye ni ile onwere ga na obodo ozo di anya na eba hu ko me fuchara inye ni ile onwere ste ni bi ndu nzuzu mbo me fuchara inye ni ile oko nwo dara na obodo ahu omalisi no no ko o gara no nyere otu onye obodo ahu onye zigara ya nu bi ya izu ezi o gara amasi ya iriri umezi ahu riforo mana onwe onye nyere ya inye obola mbo mataru nwe ya osere mmadole bu ndi oru ngo no nu bi na mu na eri na anwo na emi yori otu de ha mma ma ano me ba na anwo na go aga me bili lakuru nam aga ma se ya na eme hela mu megide eligwe megide kwa ge eto sim ka akpokwa mu nwa ge ozo na akposo ma agwa diko otu ni ime ndi oru gi obilire lakuru nna ya ma mbe oka na ebe di anya nna ya ahuru ya nwa obi ebele na ebe ono baro so mako ya susu kwe yonu nwa ahusiri ya nna m eme hela mu megide eligwe ma megide kwa gi esosi m ka akpo kwa mu nwa gi ozo mana nna ya asiru mo dibo ya me na osi so che pota nu we nwu da kacha ma yibe no ya ba wa no ya mba aka na abobo oku bo pota nu nwe ya ho gbara aboba bo nu ya ka ni kwa no riri nwe kwa nwore ni hi na nwa mu nka anwa ola ri bia kwa de ko ndo ozo ofu kwa refu ewe ho ya ha bidoro nwere bo anwu ma mba nka na eme nwa nwoke ahu nke okenye no nubi mba obiaru nso no ulo onuru de egwu na aku no okporo otu nwa odibo nna ya ju ya nye na eme no ozaru ya si nwa nne gi nwoke alotala nna ge egwu ola nwe ihe ahu gbara aboba ni ihe na olotara na udo na ari ike iwe were ya nke na ocho ha ikwa ibanye nulo nna ya apotara ruo ya se 
mano osere na ya le oto fa fondia ka nno na agbara go dibo onwe be him gbenu puri si na ewoge onwe him gbe mbunyerem obula di nwe ewu ka muna ndi enyi murie manwere kwa mana mbe nwa ge nka lotara oni ya no mu nwa anya ku na ripia chari ye ni ile iburi ya nwe ya ho gbara aboba na ya sere ya nwam muna ge no mbe ni ile iye nwere bukwa no nke ge okwesere kwesi ka ni kpo rire manwere kwa maka na wonne ge anwola re ma de kwa ndo ozo ofukwa refu ewere ho kwa ya take our seats. Special announcement on appeal, please. The avenue to the pastoral center is blocked by many cars. There are not supposed to be cars parked there. If you park in the avenue to the pastoral center, please, please go and remove your car now. Thank you. Mundem, oto de nu Jesu. Ona hona di bere banye. Gini kae ga sine ha o. Ozo. Ozo kwa. Your excellencies. Your eminences. We are just saying, you are most welcome to our Lord. My dear people of God, your eminences, Cardinal John Onaikon and Peter Cardinal Okpaleke, our archbishops and bishops, priests, religious men and women, our state governor and other government officials, traditional rulers, knights of the church, your royal highnesses, and the graces, we welcome all of you to our law. On this 21st Sunday 
in ordinary time of the year, God has used this occasion of the second plenary meeting of the bishops of our land to gather us together. United in faith, we have gathered here in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, our merciful and compassionate Father, to pray and worship him. So in the name of the, of the Diocese of our Lord, the clergy, religious, laity, I welcome all of you to our Lord. We thank God for granting you a safe trip. We wish our bishops a safe a fruitful deliberation. At the time of your return, may God guide you safely back. The instrument of the book of gospel we just watched now is our trademark. On here, the Marandolo, the major occasions in this cathedral when thrown the Bible, the book of gospel, we call it is Ugozoma. We are, in a way, a dancing church. Like the Jewish Passover feast, this song narrates the story of where we were before the arrival of Christianity and the huge benefits we, we derived from Christianity. No more killing of twins, no more human sacrifices, respect for women, Western education, monotheism, and many others. We thank God for all the missionaries who brought the faith to us. My dear people, certainly or probably, you may have heard of the slogan, all our people are good. What you hear about our law is true. All our people are really good people. Christianity, and in particular, Catholicism, found the most fertile soil on earth when the message of Christ was brought to us about the year 1910. Since then, Christianity has continued to grow. The slogan, although people are good, as ancient as it, as it is, was popularized by our father in faith, the foundation of Bishop of our diocese, who is not from our law by origin, but encounters the, the good people of our law and continue to re echo our law people are good. We cannot fail to remember him on an occasion like this. I'm referring to our cherished former Bishop, Most Reverend Gregory Obina Ochara, of blessed memory. His place of rest lies at my right here. He looked forward to this day, to the colorful and significant gathering of all the bishops in our law. While he was alive, he gave a lot of impetus toward the preparation of today. I believe from heaven, he's smiling in admiration and satisfaction of our modest efforts. My beloved bishops, you are coming to our law is one of the best things that will happen or has happened to us as a local church in our 41 years of history. We are confident that your presence will bring the cherished blessings to our diocese, help to cement the dawn of peace, which has already begun to return to our region, to promote Christian faith and the welfare of the society at large, and particularly the Christian faith, will be strengthened by a visit. By a, visit. a look at the readings of this Sunday. The readings of this Sunday revolve around the silliness of God's children and God's merciful love. God who seeks out his own, even when his own people, on account of their foolishness, get lost. Today, as always, we discover our God who demonstrates that his love and mercy surpass his anger and judgment. The first relief from Exodus saw God's people who were delivered from slavery from Egypt and in their wilderness journey to the promised land, 
easily forgot their deliverer, God. Moses had gone up the mountain to receive the tablets of the law, which is written by the hand of God himself, that would be the sign and the seal of the covenant with God. Impatient, after waiting for a while, the people pressurizing Aaron, organized themselves, contributed their jewels, and melted them to construct for themselves a golden calf. They bowed before the calf, danced around it, and offered sacrifice to it. It was God who saw this first and called the attention of Moses to it. In an anthropomorphic description, the anger of God flared up. Idolatry is a direct affront to God. God warned in Isaiah chapter 4 verse 8 that he will never share his glory with any creature. Idolatry is gratitude to a creature for favors received from God. God proposed to visit them with devastation. But Moses stood up to God in intercession, reminding him of his great promises to the patriarchs and interceding for them. God relented. The part of the lost coin, with the, of the lost sheep, with a picture of a, a shepherd carrying his sheep on his shoulders, offered the Christian tradition the pop, popular image of Christ the Good Shepherd, the bonus pastor. The part of the lost coin, only related in loose gospel, has very delicate nuance that only close reading and meditation can uncover. The woman who lost the drachma is not well to do. She is poor, living in her heart, maybe no windows. That is why it has to light up a light to go and search the whole house for the lost coin. What is the need to begin to look for a small drachma, a small cover, which is not big. In Hebrew, we say, no, cocoa and water, we hear. The fowl of a, of a poor person, of a person, is his cow. So this, man, this woman placed a lot of emphasis on that coin. Finding it, she does not rejoice alone. She calls his neighbors to come and rejoice with him. What is this rejoicing over this little coin? Is it worth calling your friends? It's only a drachma. But here, it is not the financial calculus that we're talking about. He is talking about a broken relationship that has been restored. And finally, the prodigal son in the gospel reading shows us either the prodigal son or the merciful father depending on which way you want to emphasize. Set in the context of a normal family, the young of the two sons caught the link with the father's love, probably believing that he would handle his affairs better while cut off from the father. He asked his father for his own part of the estate. The father obliged. That led him to a wild goose chase for happiness. He never knew or believed that material possession he had from his father would not last long if the relationship with the father was not there. A series of rethinking at events made him come back to the father. On coming back, surprisingly, he received neither scolding or warning, not even a condition for reinstatement from his father. It was he who even proposed a reduction of rank. Treat me as one of your hired laborers. His father welcomed him royalty and brought him back into the fold. Shades of prodigality in our country and nation today. The story of Moses and the community of Israel depicts our spiritual journey. This Old Testament story mirrors our constant infidelity before our benevolent and faithful God. 
how soon the people of Israel forgot what God did for them by bringing them out from slavery. How easy can a people lose the orientation due to impatience? How often do we respect, do reject the love of God and place our hope in creatures and not on the Creator? God created us in His own image, but now and often we want to recreate God in our own image and expectations. How often have we met golden calves like money, power, authority, materials, and other wealth to invent to replace God and goodness and dance our life around those human inventions? We as a nation can identify with the moving stories presented in today's readings. But the people of God describe the Old Testament reading and the prodigal son summarized our collective shortcomings and lack of memory before God. Often we have not reciprocated God's love for us, whether as individuals, as a church, or even as a nation. These are stories of relationships in the first place. Many traditional commentaries emphasize the prodigality of this young man. Prodigality in terms of the son who wasted his father's wealth. In Igbo language, we say this son normally, we refer to this son as Nwa Lara Konayaniye, the son who wasted his father's wealth. Yes, this son wasted the enormous wealth of his father. But the question is, what is this wealth in the first place? In the course of the story, most of the characters, if not all, except the father, totally or partially understand the world in material terms. The young man himself even reasoned that his fellow servants had enough to eat while he starved, all in material terms. But the world, before being material, is love of the father, the non-material relationship with the father. Psychology tells us that relationship is key to every human interaction. Therefore, we must maintain healthy relationship both with ourselves and with God. And this is exactly what the father emphasized in the first son when he said, Son, you have been with me and all I have is yours. Maintain good relationship with neighbor and above all with God. Being, concerning, being with the father Concerning that is a relationship with God. God's our relationship with God is a factor we must re reassess today, individual as persons and collectively, even as a nation. We can easily identify with this wasteful young man. The story of Nigeria is a perfect analogy of a son who has squandered the goods of his father. After many years. As a nation, we cannot account for the enormous blessings of human resources and natural endowments bestowed freely on this country by God. A country blessed with arable lands and farming potentialities has become a population visibly looking famished due to hunger and high cost of food. A country with natural endowments like oil and gas he said, importing fuel. The prodigal son didn't even do as much as we are doing today. A country with enormous blessings of youth population, therefore productive age, rather records the highest percentage of youth unemployment, wasting our father's wealth. A country with enormous youth population that could be employed, even in security work, is now on her knees and about to surrender her faith to armed bandits and terrorists. A country that has produced best brands acknowledged over the world is now, has now millions out of school and its universities are closed for many months due to us to strike and our youths are roaming the streets which could lure them into a life of crime. An idle mind, he said, is the devil's workshop. 
a country with, lit, with rich linguistic and natural diverse, cultural diversity, instead of blending it to form a rainbow, is now bleeding from north to south, east to west, pointing at human tribal religious sentiments at its worst. A country blessed with deep sense of religiosity, which is a positive thing. But in this country today, religion is applied as a political tool of oppression and marginalization. This is wasting the Father's wealth. We are prodigal. A country with many capable hands still has appointments made along tribal and religious lines. A country whose currency 40 years ago surpassed all the currencies of the greatest economies in the world. Today, a whole bag of her money is exchanged for paltry one dollar or one pound. What a prodigal nation ours has been and continues to be. Our society is not working. Things have fallen apart and men are no longer at ease. As individuals, we don't even fare better. We have wasted our father's wealth. We have gone prodigal. A lecturer who is paid to teach and from young minds, but fails to do so, instead abuses them and takes advantage of them, is wasting his prodigality at his worst. Or a student who was sent to university to learn, but goes there to become a cultist or indulge on healthy practices and actions, is equally prodigal. Even a child, even no Moaka, that child who lies to his parents and collects more money that was living at school, to go and buy akara or change him or sweet with extra money is prodigal. A businessman or woman who uses his acumen to exploit and damage humanity is equally a prodigal child. Or a clergyman like me who uses his position and talent to divide his society instead of promoting unity and peaceful coexistence has wasted opportunity and the father's wealth. One, uses his wealth to oppress and dehumanize society is equally prodigal. Even one is elected to lead their people and make lives better for them, but thinks of himself and his family alone. His prodigal son or daughter, or a woman who uses his beauty, God-given beauty, to seduce men and break homes, is wasting his father's wealth. Or a contractor who's, who absconds or does inferior work after collecting all the contract money to acquire personal houses and cars and all that is prodigal. They have wasted their father's wealth. All this material squandering of resources are only the effects of a spiritual cutting off relationship with God. We learn, we learn from Moses the selflessness of Moses as a leader. Leadership is key to success of every nation or organization. Our first reading from Exodus is a moving scene. The infidelity of the people, their outward idolatry sparks off the flame of God's anger. Impressing intercession of, Mos of Moses calms the heat of God's anger. The personality of Moses here speaks partly to all leaders of God's people, religious people, community leaders, even politicians. Yes, the people are ignorant, recalcitrant, unappreciative of divine blessings. Still, Moses, who could secure blessings, success, or a great future for himself, or claim righteousness, decided to lay the line of intercession and pleas for God's mercy for his people. The survival of the community of Israel was more important to Moses than his own personal greatness and survival. As religious or political leaders, community leaders, where, where and how do we place the survival of those entrusted to us, like Moses, vis-a-vis -vis our own personal and family or religious progress? Unfortunately, the happenings in our society today at all levels, both in communities, both in said, but everywhere, even in institutions, does not reflect the selflessness of Moses. Our society is presently too sick, among others, needs to be resuscitated 
We need leaders like Moses at every stratum of society who are people-oriented. Again, age has its wisdom, but youth have strength of mind and of body. Let the youth be given chance to govern and to lead a complex society in a modern, complex world. Let the older people give young people a chance, provide them with wise advice and counsel, and let them lead. The leader should know better, even when the rest do not understand. There is no excuse for, there was no excuse for Aaron, who allowed his people to sink into idolatry because of pressure. Our leaders should know that the inadequacy of the people is not justification for their incompetence. Above all, I would like to add that no group is entitled to rule as a birthright. One should have the mental, physical, and human capacities to lead. Every tribe, region, religion has a share of competent and incompetent people. Leadership is not a birthright. Conditions of violence. In the Christian tradition, Moses is a great prophet. But we shall recall that Moses began his ministry by some act of violence. We see this in his personal development. From the royal court where he was raised, being conscious of identity as a Jew, he saw a fellow Jew being molested by an Egyptian. He killed the Egyptian and hid his body in the soil, thinking that that violence, that violence is the best way to bring relief to the people. He met failure the next day when he wanted to settle a quarrel between, a Hebrew, between two Hebrew citizens. The response he got was, will you kill me as you kill the Egyptian? That made him aware that violence was not the best way to control, to control violence. And a violence, through violence, he lost his credentials to restoring fraternity since his hands were dirty. In our society today, there's more shedding of innocent blood. Violence begins violence. Had issued several statements on this issue, like shed no blood in October last year, appealing to state and non-state actors to abhor violence. Human life is sacred and must be respected. Our hand, our hand has, our land has been polluted by blood of the innocent. The new Moses resorted to intercession. The old Moses resorted to violence, killing an Egyptian. The new Moses resorted to intercession with God. I've always appealed to a new approach to solving our problems. Resorting to a Western approach to solving African problems through the courts, as in some ongoing national cases, is good, but it's not a golden drug. That is a drug without side effect. That's a golden drug. They are still hoping to invent one. A drug without side effect. Even within the context of the Western court and judiciary, some advanced countries advocate the use of plea bargain, an alternative dispute resolution to settle cases. This sometimes involves a give and take, but guarantees deeper level of peace. A court may deliver judgment, which may not be justice. Therefore, I strongly suggest genuine dialogue. Listening to a people who feel aggrieved could help down some of the tensions today we have in our society. God in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 said, Come, let us reason together. Negotiation is a form of strength and not weakness. A leader is a father of all kinds of people. The good, the bad, criminals, saints, thieves, all kinds of people. You are a father to all of them. In Hebrew we say, In the wealthy man's family, there are all sorts of people. But you are the father of all. The way forward. Apart from building a strong institution, which is not the focus of this church homily, our option is simple. Like the prodigal son, we need to return to the father, renouncing our waywardness. We need to mend the broken relationship with God our Father 
individually and collectively. Sincerity and humility, in sincerity and humility, we must make a very important decision. Like the prodigal son, I'll leave this place and go back to my father. The motive for the text of today, theology, is that God always is always ready to welcome and receive us, no matter how far we have gone away from him. Moses' intercessory did not go in vain. Thirty times in the Old Testament he said that God repented, not that was God changed his mind. What has God's weakness? God does not prove his power over us by punishing us because we don't merit it. Instead, his power makes perfect is made perfect in our weakness. So we must be, we must be tired of interceding for one another and for the world and for our country before a merciful and compassionate Lord. The bishops compose several prayers. So let us repeat those, keep saying those prayers and keep interceding for God's help. We must be honest. In a country where honesty is a scarce commodity, we are citizens and sometimes government agencies freely circulate fake news through social media to control people's minds or purposely tell lies to the people with impunity could be described as a nation of lies. And such nations don't last long. Like the prodigal son, let us make the mere copa. For we have all, in one way or the other, squandered our father's wealth, either as individuals or as a church or as a nation. We have also made golden calf of money, of position and power, and a lot of times dance around dance ourselves around it. Let us resolve to a God, that God whose mercy surpasses his judgment and wrath. God has made this return easy for us through Jesus Christ. Therefore, my people, we made the mere copper and return like the father, like the, the prodigal son, of which in one way or the other we all are, and ask God pardon as individuals and also as a nation. May God bless you and God keep you. May he forgive us and bring us back and make our society better through Christ our Lord.
credo in enunum Deo. My dear brothers and sisters, let us present our needs to God, our loving Father, and ask him to grant fruitful deliberations to the Catholic bishops of Nigeria as they begin their plenary meeting today. Our response is, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. And the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord.
for the pastors of the church that the Holy Father, Pope Francis, our bishops, and our priests may remain zealous in spreading the message of salvation brought by Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Catholic bishops of Nigeria, as they gather to have their plenary meeting, their deliberations may be guided by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. civil and traditional authority that following the example of Christ they may see themselves as servants of the people always seeking to promote justice and peace and work assiduously to eradicate poverty and insecurity in our land let us pray to the Lord ourselves, that God may grant us the grace to break loose from any form of sin or addiction that may be holding us captive so that we may enjoy that freedom and peace that belongs to God's children. Let us pray to the Lord. For the dead, that they may find eternal rest with the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. silence, let us pray for our other intentions. Gracious God, giver of all good gifts, receive the humble prayers presented to you by your people and grant that we may be faithful to you in all things through Christ our Lord. Please, this is time for offer trade. Yes. Only the people sitting in the front 
may come forward to give up their offer tray in the boxes. Wherever you are sitting behind, we have offer tray boxes and baskets along the aisles. So people sitting behind, make use of the one nearest to you. The people sitting in front, please, you come forward. Please follow the directives of the cathedral warning. Thank you. Yes. When I remember the goodness of God and His mercies upon my soul, His loving kindness upon my family, I feel like shouting, no go see, no go see.
please, we are still in the mass. Please, we are still in the mass. You going here? I be a boy, Jamas. I be a rich boy, Jamas. Because no one. Mighty Father, look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord Amen. for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours he humbled himself and was born of the virgin by the passion of the cross he freed us from unending death and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate this, the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death your will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an internal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, and with blessed apostles and all glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely from unfairly help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrimage church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Augustine our Bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. 
give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Amara sina jamisa ina chu kumakamma dunine. Mina tori da so buso sunday catholic de quadro ho fuma de kankuzi no melanco ka sirede
The grace from this Eucharistic celebration is for everybody, while the reception of the Holy Communion is for only Catholics who are prepared according to the teachings and tradition of the Holy Mother the Church. O me ki me bere Nde no ni ro age wetoro no oriri nse ba nde no kwa ni mo loka ndi chocho ada na eba ga na agwo ni hu no ge so abo ni na apote na to riri nso ige ege nti na ntu zaka ndi church water umu na ide disabled ige wete korono riri nko na eba may we also add that people in the galleries should remain there they will be brought their holy communion there you will receive in the galleries there
again. Amen.